Welcome back to Hollywood Live. I'm Jack Canfield, your host. My next guest is Jennifer Kaufman. She was amazingly standing at the finish line of the Boston Marathon four and a half years ago when all we know that bomb went off. She was one of the people that was injured. Many people died that day and died later. Um, she's been on a recovery process and it got into natural healing and as a result of it. This is one of the more fascinating people I've ever interviewed. So let's just get right into it. Jennifer, welcome to the show. Thank you very much Appreciate for having you, me, Jeff. For coming all the way. Are you still live in Boston? I do. All the way to Hollywood to do this. So, so let's just jump right in there. You were standing at the finish line of the Boston Marathon, and this horrific bomb explosion occurred. What happened to you at that moment? It was surreal because um, just before the bombs went off, I mean, just imagine the crowd is just electrified and people are cheering and um, the announcers are announcing people coming across and there's music and then all of a sudden there was just this loud explosion. And I remember hearing a woman's voice say that must have been a cannon. And then within probably a second later, you heard nothing but sheer silence. And I could hear the glass behind the building behind me just hitting the ground. And I at first thought it was a gas explosion. And within a few minutes, I realized, or actually probably a few seconds more like, I realized that it was uh, an explosion. And then the second one went off roughly 12 seconds later. And it impacted you how? I was thrown into the barricade. Um, mm -hmm. So I was approximately 15 feet from the, from the bombs. They recovered my phone from, uh, from the site. And I was approximately 15 feet away. I was thrown in from the thrust of the explosion. I was thrown into the barricade. Ironically, I didn't know I was injured at the time. Uh, obviously, you're just kind of uh, chaotic and frantic, and you're trying to get your whereabouts. And um, I was with a friend of mine, and we ended up fleeing the scene. And it wasn't until about 45 minutes later we walked to Cambridge, actually. And it was approximately 45 minutes later where I realized something was seriously wrong with me. My abdomen was swelling up um, as if I was pregnant. Um, I started to feel extremely lightheaded and dizzy and nauseous, and, and all of a sudden I was just flooded with pain. And I ended up uh, being rushed to the emergency room, and uh, that actually ended up being a little traumatic too because I was flooded with doctors and nurses trying to figure out what was wrong, and they didn't know what was wrong. And in the chaos, of all of that, and as I was crying and, and shaking, I heard this subtle little voice in the, back of my, in the back of my head that said, you need to learn how to heal naturally. I had no idea what it meant at the time, and I had no knowledge of how to do that. And several hours later, after numerous tests and, and more chaos, I knew I had to, to leave. So I discharged myself against my doctor's will and against my family's will. And that began my journey of learning how to heal naturally. I had no knowledge, but God gifted me with people every step of the way, and it's been four and a half years now, and I'm glad to be able to say that I've literally healed from all of my injuries 100% naturally. Mm -hmm. So and it's the, possible. And the work you're doing now as a result of that is what? You know, I'm actually just now getting my story out there. I've spent the last four, and, four years now really working on me. Um, you can imagine I you know, had a lot of trauma that I needed to work through, sure. uh, both physical and emotional and mental. I still do healing work today. And it was actually um, in the opportunity to do this book with you, uh, Mastering the Art of Success, that I started to speak about it. Um, so now I want to share my story and share what's possible um, with folks, you know, whether they've gone through a traumatic event or a serious illness of what's really possible um, with the right mindset and, you know, surrounding yourself with, with the right people. So share some of what you've learned along the way with us, some of the basic <clears throat> principles or some of the basic concepts that you've uh, discovered and that you want to share with people. So first of all, you've been a mentor of mine for many, many years, and I had no idea that some of the work that you taught me 10, 15 years ago would actually be used in my recovery and healing. You know, the power of the mindset and the power of the belief and power of intention, right? So you focus on what it is that you want, you know, not, not what you don't want. And so one of the key things was I knew I didn't want to be a prisoner to that trauma. I didn't want to be a victim to that trauma. Mm -hmm. So um, the, having that mindset and the intention that I wanted to break through that 
Um, so that was one of the key things for me, and actually practicing that. It's one thing to learn it, but to actually be in a situation where you have to practice that. Um, and then I, I've been on this just journey of learning how whole food nutrition, for example, how uh, the right kind of supplementation, all natural supplementation, can help the physical body recover from uh, injury and trauma. And then I've learned you know, how to go about releasing emotional blockages and mental blockages. I've been on a journey of forgiveness, you know, actually having the opportunity to uh, be in the courtroom and give a victim impact statement and look the bomber in the eye and genuinely and authentically forgive them. And that's something I'm not sure I would have, you know, realized I would have done. If someone had said to me, gee, you know, you're going to go through this, the most horrific event in your life and you'll have an opportunity to forgive you know, the bombers that did that to you, I probably would have said no way. But what I realized was forgiveness wasn't about them. It was about releasing me from being a victim of that. I never viewed myself as a victim. I've always viewed myself as a survivor, but I still felt attached to that experience. I had a lot of rage and anger that I had to work through. And the minute that I actually forgave the bombers for what they did, this overwhelming amount of peace came over me. And I started to see that my own healing actually accelerated. Not that it, you know, I had been making progress, but, you know, some of that rage and anger just dissipated. So I'm just curious, you're standing in the courtroom. Yes. You're looking at these two people who... Actually one, because one died. One died, that's right, I remember. Yes. You look at this one person. Yes. And you're, you're looking at him, mm -hmm. and you've dusted on your impact statement, all the, talking about all the things that happened to you. Mm -hmm. And you said, I forgive you? Yes. And did, did you feel something immediately then, or did it only come like no. later the next day? What, what did you, when did you start to feel the impact of having done that? It was immediate. Immediate. It was immediate. So the irony is, is that um, he never looked at anyone in court. And I think there were 27 people that gave an impact statement that day. And I was 26. And I think it was the grace of God actually in that moment that I was just about to say that I forgave him and his brother for the horrific act. He looked me in the eye and there was just that moment of eye exchange. And it happened instantaneously. I just felt this release and this um, feeling of peace. And actually for the first time, I felt compassion and love towards him. And I didn't expect that as a result of, of going through that, but I genuinely had compassion for him and, and love and understanding. I don't know why he did what he did, but I no longer harbored those um, ill wills or anger towards him. It just dissipated. Mm. That's, that's powerful. And I think that's so important. I just talked to a woman who was 83, I think, and she had a life-threatening illness when she was about 80. Mm -hmm. And she, someone said, go to Hawaii, talk to this healer. Mm -hmm. And she went over there, he put her on a, like a massage table, and he went back through every year of her life saying, who do you need to forgive, mm -hmm. who do you need to forgive? And it was like a five or six hour process. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the day, she felt amazing, and within a week or two, whatever was gonna basically mm -hmm. take her out was gone. Mm -hmm. So I think it's so powerful and, and uh, it's interesting. And actually, it did actually lead me because I had, I was like, well, you know, situations that were not nearly as horrific or traumatic, but people in my life that I needed to forgive or myself actually, you know, um, and seeing the power of that and how it positively affect the acceleration of my own healing ability. Um, you know, some people thought I wouldn't fully recover, and I was like, no, I absolutely will recover, and I'll do whatever it takes to, to make that happen, mm -hmm. and I think forgiveness is a big piece of that, and I it's do free. Too. Yeah. So you, forgiveness is free. Very good. Doesn't cost anything. Doesn't cost a thing. Have to write a check. So um, you're now wanting to share what you've learned with the world, and um, you've shared some of what you, you've learned. Mm -hmm. And what you, you talked about being and having a, a vision of, of health mm -hmm. and recovery. Mm -hmm. So what's your vision now? You, you want to help people. What's your vision of what that will look like when you've achieved it? 
You know, that's an excellent question. I want people to walk away with knowing that no matter what happens to them, no matter what it is, whether you lost a job or you going through a serious illness or divorce, that you, there is good in everything. And you just have to look for it and, and dig for it. And, you know, for me, it's, it's positively impacting, you know, people all around the world, whether it's children, whether it's, you know, men or women. Um, and no matter what life throws at you, just look for the good in it and, and, and take that negative experience and use that to fuel you forward and to make you a stronger, better person. Mm -hmm. You know, if, if anybody um, reading my story or listening to, to my story, like that's what I want people to get because the truth is I am a better, stronger person today for having gone through that horrific experience. I wish to God it, it wasn't that, but the truth is um, there is good in, in those bad situations and I just want to help spread that message Very to millions good. of people. So if there are people out there who want to contact you, so want to find out how they can perhaps hire you as a speaker, uh, get your book, uh, share you with the world because this message is so important, how do they contact you? How do they get in touch? They can go to my website, jennifercoffman.com, and they can access me. Uh, they can watch videos of me. They can uh, purchase the book. They can um, contact me uh, any way that they want to. Good, good, good. Well, I encourage people to do that. You've got a wonderful calm but positive persona, if you will. Mm -hmm. You've obviously benefited from what you've gone through. I always say every negative event has a seed of an equal or greater benefit in it. Absolutely. You've obviously taken that to heart. Mm -hmm. Make sure you get in touch with her website. Um, this is somebody who has a huge message that can be very impactful for your life and for the people that perhaps you serve in your company, your association, your organization. So for the rest of you, Stay tuned, we'll be right back after this message.